okay with moving forward with the meeting, understanding that Michael is not here? I'm okay moving forward with the meeting, knowing that it's Kim Hamilton, Kelly Pruitt, and Amber Stevens that are in the room. I have requested okay. for Michael Schilling and the lawyers to be in the room as well, so I guess that we'll have to do that at a further date. Wait, what lawyers are you talking about? Uh, Sharon Carney and Terry Julian, family service lawyers. About having any attorneys in the room. Okay, well, I would. I asked for them to be there in my email to Kelly Pruitt. Okay, well, we're, I'm speaking directly to a conversation I had with you when I scheduled this, because they weren't even aware of me scheduling. I'm the one that set it up, because I wanted to make sure that I had everyone that was involved with the case that is available to be a, a conversation to help guide your suggestions and to give you feedback based on what we have control over and what we need. So what we're looking to do today is to get more to go one by one and talk through your concerns so that we can see what are things that either we can tell you and inform you about or things that we may not have any knowledge about or to make sure that we work through things so that we can have a productive and resolving conversation. So okay. if it's okay with you, I'm going to give you the floor first. To share with us, one by one, what concerns you have so that we can start to work through those. This call will be about maybe an hour, if max, if that. Um, hopefully it won't take that long. I just want to be able to get through your concerns and be able to have some conversation about them. Okay. I also want Michael Schilling to be in a meeting with us before the end of the 30-day notification that I got as far as um, my grievance request about this meeting being called, and that's why it was granted. He needs to be here for the next one. There will not be a second meeting. This will be the meeting for your grievance. Okay, well, then there will be another grievance called, so we will have another meeting. Okay, so let's start. Hey, as you like, Ms. Glazer, is your right as a citizen? I know. As a Consumer. Okay. So you can call as often as you like. I will be in the meetings each time, and okay. we'll have conversations each time they occur. Great. All right. So I have the floor. You absolutely do. Yes. Okay. Number one. So let's go through the case plan that I just received after the April sixteenth meeting with Family Services. Do you have that in front of you? I don't have. We don't have any documents in front of us. Okay, why would you not have the documents that I want to discuss at the meeting with you? Why wouldn't you have them with you? First of all, we didn't talk about no documents. We talked about very clearly concerns. Okay, well then I'm going to read the documents and you can just follow along and you can answer the questions, okay? Because Kelly Pruitt's read them, so he, she knows about them, and so is Amber. Let me be also clear with you again. I am not going to do case management. Or case reviewing, that's what the SAR is for. Okay. So we're talking about concerns specifically around the areas about, about feeling like people are tampering, that you're not getting things from us. Those are things that were outlined to be discussed. So let's talk about them. Okay, so on the review that I just got, it says, Ms. Glazer reportedly has mental, extensive mental health concerns. There reportedly is a history of schizophrenia and other mental health concerns in Ms. Glazer's family. She reportedly throws things when she is mad, can become angry and begin yelling seemingly unprovoked, and has threatened to report FCCS and various others to the FBI. Mrs. Glazer reports has a history of domestic violence. Let's start with it there. Okay. I have been under a psychiatric um, regimen for the past 10 years and have been medicated, okay? Nowhere in any of the reports did it ever state my true psychiatric history, okay? I was not only did not have extensive mental health concerns, I was not considered a threat, a risk, or a danger in any way to the psychiatrist that I was seeing, Dr. Sahadio and Dr. John Waite. I mean, it was to the point where I would go in every two months to check in with them, they would see how I was doing, and they would give me a, a, a refill of my prescriptions. So where is everyone getting this, this false allegation that I have repeatedly told you I have been under psychiatric care and have had a, me a, a mental diagnosis, psychiatric diagnosis of PTSD? I even sent you a copy of the medication that I'm on for the psychiatric meds that I've been on for the past 
10 years and not one time was that mentioned in one of the case reviews. Can you explain that? When did, all, when did you, when were you under psychiatric care? I have been under psychiatric care for the past 10 years before this last eight months. The only reason that I haven't gone to see the shrink in the last eight months is because I fled from my life and was in grave fear of people um, giving me a false diagnosis, which is exactly what the judge did without any new without any new doctor's diagnosis in on the restraining order. Uh, fraudulently, he did that. I have never been diagnosed with bi bipolar, schizophrenia, or narcissistic personality disorder in my life. The only diagnosis I ever had is PTSD. Okay, and Family Services is sitting on a uh, a medical file of mine from Kentucky Baptist. Okay, that states such, and they still will not put it in any of the reports. Well, for for I can answer part of that, a judge is not advising with a diagnosis. Okay, well, you know what? That's not what his lawyer says. What's that? That's not what his lawyer said. His lawyer said, "Oh, that just went on hearsay." And he just put it in there. But that wasn't true either. Okay, so anyways, go on. Whose lawyer are you talking about? Uh, Delaware County Clerk's lawyer. Mark uh, something. I have him on video. I can give you his last name later. His first name, okay. I believe, is Mark or Matt. It starts with an M. He is the Delaware <laughs> County Clerk lawyer. Okay, so let's do this. We can't focus on anything that's not... So uh, what do you, what area do you want to I want to know, I want to know why it's not reported that the, that the prescriptions that I've shown them with the psychiatric meds, ha, there's never been one thing that says I've had any psychiatric care in any of these, in any of these, um, reports. Why has that been deliberately omitted? Okay, go ahead. I'm letting, I'm letting Kelly speak to the... Okay. Uh, so I don't know of this one. Oh I can I would be more than glad to send you a release for me to speak with that psychiatrist if you'd like. Uh, but I don't know of any psychiatrist that you Okay, that's fine, because right here, I have the medication that they've written me out. Okay, I have a picture of the bottle, and go ahead and do that. Now, this isn't going to take you two months to get that clearance like it did at Jerome Golden when you said that you had uh, you had called them for my, for my medical release, and you had never done that. You had never called them. I have that on video. To get what clearance, later? Uh, To get the mental eval cleared from Jerome Golden. When we were all in the meeting on April 16th, you said that you had ordered that. You never ordered that. I called the next day. No, no, no medical files had ever been ordered. It took you an extra, what, two weeks to even order the medical file for the mental eval? And then it took you two months to respond to me about it. Okay, but you had mentioned to get, that it would take a long time for me to get something cleared. What are you referring to? I didn't say it would take a long time for you to get anything clear. What I said was, are you going to take forever, like you did last time, getting things from my psychiatrist? I can get that release over. It's just a blank release. Yes, go ahead and do that. Send a break release for Dr. Sahadio, and please send a blank release for Dr. John Waite. I need that. What's his last name? Waite? Yeah, W-A-I-T-E. Sahadio, S A H A D E O. And where? What? What agency did he work for? Okay, so Doctor Sahadio works for him. Works for St. Mary's Hospital over on Forty Fifth Street. He is the, and he also has his own private psychiatric facility that I went to for eight years over on Forty Fifth Street in West Palm Beach, Florida. So he has a private practice, and he's worked at St. Mary's Hospital. Yes. She's the, he's okay. the attending shrink for the for the mental ward there. At the hospital, or do you see him in private practice? Yes, he's a head doc. He's the head doctor for St. Mary's, and he also has a private practice. Where did you see him at? Oh, hospital? I saw him in his private practice for eight years. For eight years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so what? Do you have any information about his practice? Where it's at? An address? Uh, uh, sure. It's on Forty Fifth Street. I can get that for you. I'll leave it for you on a message. I'll put that down in the notes. How about you send that in the email? Copy that information so that we. Okay, what's your email, Kim? I'm sorry. What is your email? 
Um, I would like your email, though. You've been working directly with her. That's fine. I would prefer to have an email for you as well. Oh, I don't have a problem with you having my email. Yeah, could you give me your email, please? Yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. At what? At FCCS. FCCS dot what? Sorry. No problem. You with us? Okay. K A H A M I L T O N at FCCS dot U S. So it's K A H A M I L T. Yeah. I L T. I L T. No O N. That's it. Nothing else. Okay. FCCS dot U S. Okay. Thank you. John, wait. Where is he? He is in Las He's in Henderson, Nevada. He lives in Nevada? Yeah, because I was when I moved from Florida to Nevada, I took up with him as my shrink to continue yes. my my medical. Uh, work with him. Dr. John Waite in Las uh, Vegas. Oh, two years. And then where did you work with him out of a hospital or private practice? Private practice. Private practice. And do you have his information as well? As I, will, I will email to you. That's fine. That's how we do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, aside from the Jerome Golden Center, involved with any other... No. I have not gone back to the Jerome Golden Center since I had the mental evaluation. Okay. It is a Jerome Golden... By clarification, is that a... It's a psych... It's, a, it's like a psychiatric facility. Okay, is that in Florida? Yes. It's How also on 45th you? Street, right down the street from Dr. Sahadio's, actually. How long were you there? Oh, I just went in for the mental eval. Oh, for the, for the mental? Yeah. Okay. Have you copy of that? Uh, yeah, they've had a copy for a long time. I've done it over two months ago. It came back okay. that I was sane and, and that I was having severe uh, police problems. Okay, so on that fact alone, you've been holding Eden on illegal grounds. Who? My daughter, Eden Glazer, you've been holding her on grounds that I have severe mental health concerns and that a history of schizophrenia is in my family, and that is not true. Who? I'm sorry. Who did you say you've been holding her? FCCS. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. I don't know if you have well, but it sounds like you have yeah, it's not a great connection. Sorry about that. Oh, well, that's okay. That's not your fault. That's okay. So, tell me where you want to work on, on this. Okay, so I want to know why it's been deliberately concealed about my reports about having gone to the psychiatrist for 10 years. Like, that's basically it. And you guys can go ahead and the whole case is built on that. So, whatever. Okay, so then it says on my second page that I reported that I had completed a psychological evaluation. Uh, who was the woman that was in, who are all the people that were in the meeting on April 16th, Mrs. Pruitt? You were there. Uh, yeah, it was, it was myself. You can see it. Uh, myself, one of our supervisors. Um, what supervisor was it? Okay, so Michael was there. Who was the D woman? Oh, she's the facilitator. What's what's her last name? Thomas. D Thomas. Okay, and then who was the person that actually wrote this report? So D Thomas is the one that wrote this report. Are you mean who, whoever wrote the actual, like, document? Yeah, who wrote this document? It would have been the facilitator. Okay, so D. Thomas lied when she said that I reported that I completed a psychological evaluation. I have that on video. She might have been, I don't, I don't know what she's referring to, but she just types up what people in the meeting talk about, about updates. 
Okay, well, it happened to go a lot coincide with the tampered restraining order that says I've been diagnosed with schizophrenia, bipolar, and narcissistic personality disorder when that was neither in the first nor the second hearing judgment of the restraining order. Okay? It's just, it's a very strange timing is what I'm saying. Okay. So you think the timing of the SAR in my inner review and the timing that your restraining order was stating was stating fraudulently that I had been diagnosed with three mental disorders that I have not. I think it's strange timing. It was right after okay. that. All right. I mean, I, I'll give you that. You have that right to feel that way. Mm -hmm. I, I know there was no um, lead-in or some kind of design for that. Mm -hmm. it, it really is possibly just timing. I don't Okay. All right. So then on the page three of the April 16th review. It says that Eden was initially a, a diagnosed with adjustment disorder, and then, which has now been a change to a reactive attachment disorder. What exactly does that mean? Well, I mean, some of their counselors didn't do the diagnosis. I mean, generally, you know, it's, they're both types of adjustment. Um, it's a struggle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Okay, so it, it says here she has difficulty attaching to others and fears abandonment. That's not my child. The person that you were describing, the child that you were describing has been severely damaged in this past eight months. She was never like that. Okay, uh, she was a straight A, wonderful, never gave me a day of problems in her life kid. I'm telling you, best kid in the world, and I don't even, now it's time it says that she, it's, it's a question whether she will be promoted to the next grade level. She's spoken about self-harming. She is grabbing attention no matter how she gets it. I don't, what have you done to my daughter to make her act in this way? Okay, well, difficulty attaching, fear of abandonment, failing the fifth grade and talking about self-harming, that is not the little girl that was that you took in Ohio, okay? That is a little girl that has been permanently damaged by this situation, all right? With me as her mother, she was thriving, and now she is doing horribly, okay? And that is the biggest concern here, all right? And that's what keeps keeping me up at nights, all right? So... Okay, next question. All right, I'm just going to go through this. Okay, why have you, who has paid for Marcus Skeet to fly from Las Vegas to Ohio? What, I'm sorry, what does that have to do with it? What does that have because that's the father that they're planning on giving custody to. And if they've offered to pay for his plane flights, why haven't they offered to pay for mine? So, is the issue about pay for flight? Yeah, that's another issue that I have. Have you, has Family Services been in any way involved? Or does they know about any payments that Marcus would receive to have plane tickets bought for him to come out to from Las Vegas to Ohio by no. family services or a state agency? Very clear, no. Okay. We do not. I would think not, but in, in the review it says transportation will be provided, so I wanted to make sure we weren't talking airplane tickets. You know what I mean? I hear what you're saying, but it's absolutely Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh... Let's see. Okay, so over here on page da, 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 one of seven on the 01-22-2018 case review, I guess that they're stapled together. It says that I attended one visit with Eden, but then stopped attending. That is true, but the reason that I stopped attending was because there was a restraining order being held against me with fraudulent charges. Family Services knew full well that Kelly was holding me on fraudulent charges. They never said anything about 
knowing that I had never shown up at Kelly's house that night. They knew Kelly was making a false allegation, and I was definitely afraid that Kelly was going to make another false allegation to put me in jail. That is why I left Ohio, okay? Because at that point, I definitely knew that there was a nasty setup that was coming, okay? That had already come and was just going into further a further worse situation, okay? I didn't leave because I wanted to. I left in fear of incarceration. Okay. What? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. Why did you feel you were going to be incarcerated? Okay, because my sister, I found out at Family Services that my sister had filed a restraining order on basically a groundless basis saying that I had showed up to kidnap Eden on September 22nd. I did not know that Eden was even at Family Services was even at Kelly's house because family services had told me that she wasn't okay. And family services knew when they got the first restraining order that that was untrue, but yet they never said one word about Kelly's false allegations and just completely went along with it. All right. So I thought, well, you know what, if they'll go along with that, Kelly will just make another false accusation, say that I showed up again and have me incarcerated and family services certainly isn't going to tell them that it's not true. <laughs> That's why I left. Okay. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. What is this um, domestic history of domestic violence that I see that you're reporting? And why you've made domestic violence one of the stipulations of me retaining custody of my daughter again? To my knowledge, there's uh, I guess documented history of domestic violence. I think a lot of times our intake department. Um, I believe that that came from intake, and I think a lot of times our intake department went various areas to rule out for concerns, so they want to make sure, and we want to make sure that there's no domestic violence uh, issues going on, uh, so that's why one of the items on that case list is to do a domestic Okay. All right, so on here, it says about uh, Mrs. Glazer is going to call the authorities, the FBI. Mrs. Glazer hangs up on caseworker, told caseworker Ohio, Ohio's air is radiated, explained to caseworker that a bomb exploded. Well, there was actually a really nasty explosion in West Virginia. But anyways, as I have stated, when I went off of my clonazepam that I have been on for 10 years, Okay, I basically had a nervous breakdown due to the fact that you abducted Eden and that I went off the medication that I had been on for 10 years, the clomazepam and the temazepam, and that was what happened there. Okay, that behavior has since stopped since my chemical balance has been restored. Okay, and there has never been another incident between us for months. So I want that clearly documented. What happened? It was that I went off my medication that I've been on for 10 years. I'm lucky I didn't have a seizure and die. Everybody has horrible uh, reactions, both uh, both physically and mentally, when they go off of psychi psychiatric meds that they've been on for a decade. I was on temazepam and clonazepam. So just so we know that that's what happened there. Um... For you. Ms. Yes. Oh, because I was being chased around Ohio and in fear to go to any more psychiatrists because I was afraid that they were going to give me a false diagnosis and say that this investigation where I have been repeatedly harassed, threatened, run off the road, in danger of my life, everything else that everybody else said I was making up in my head, that the, that the shrinks were going to say I was making up it in my head too, which is why I waited until I got all the evidence. You know what I mean? Now I went and got the mental evaluation. I'm going for the psychological eval. The, the, the point is, is that I never had a problem with going to the shrink until everybody wanted to give me a, a false diagnosis and call me a schizo so that I wouldn't be able to testify in court about what's happened to me. Yeah. All right. So then I'm reading about here with Eden again. She has some difficulties with boundaries, limits, does not respond well to being comforted. Once again, that is totally different than how my child has ever acted in, in in my care or in the care of any of her nannies or her camp counselors or her school teachers. Uh, difficulties with boundaries. Eden always listens very, very well. Well, does not respond well to being comforted. I mean, you're kidding me. I cuddle my kid all the time. Difficulty bonding, trusting individuals. Well, that's because of what's been done to her with you guys. She was always too trusting until this happened to her in Ohio. Trust me. All right. Dude. 
Okay. All right. So that goes through one of one of the case plans. Okay. I need copies of every single one of the assessments and every single thing that Family Services ha does have in their file about me. And when you say Family Services, I mean Franklin County Children's Services. Everything in uh -huh. everything in Kelly's file, I need it. I need the intake. Because that was so full of fallacies and contradictions. Okay, it proves that you absolutely have not been on my side since the beginning. Okay? I need copies of every single one of those things. And also... You, hmm? Lady, you have a right to right? Yes. Okay, so you know... I have repeatedly asked for these case plans to be sent to me. They have not been sent to me. What I'm doing is involving you in this. This is why you are here at this. I need every case plan. I'm, I've been repeatedly asking for this. And I need my medical chart from Kentucky Baptist Hospital sent to me by Mrs. Pruitt, who has not sent that to me either. Okay? And I need the original restraining order that Mrs. Pruitt had that she still has not been sending me. The one that we all got. On October, she got it on September 22nd. I got it on October 11th, delivered to me, and uh, she still has not given. Mrs. Pruitt, where is a copy of the first restraining order that you received that you have never given to me? So, Miss Lacey, you know you have the right by your attorney to file for so that you can get any of the files. I understand that. I'm asking Kelly Pruitt a question. Why did she not give me the, the, the restraining order that was given to me in family services? Why have I never gotten that back from her? I've only gotten tampered documents. Since I've asked her for the restraining order, the only thing that I've received from her are tampered documents. Never did I receive the original restraining order that, that I received on October 11th of family services and that she had a copy of. And so did Michael Schilling. Where is, the, where is that restraining order that has Kelly's f facts and findings in it, Mrs. Pruitt? Okay, well then. Hold on, let her finish. Let her All right. There was the temporary 2017, and then I don't remember the date. And now I'm not sure what the date is. But and then the long, I think that one was in February of this year. Okay, so if those are the only two restraining orders that you have, then you're missing, you're missing one. And in actuality, what I've seen in my evidence is that you've been, you're missing three and that those two are completely inaccurate and false. You may be able to talk with your lawyer about getting I have been talking to my lawyer with about that. Don't worry. Okay, so let's see. No, there were only two, but they kept on getting switched out. Yep. The first one's gone. The one that I have in my hand with Kelly's written statement is no longer available. You don't have it. The second one that you sent me uh, has different time marks on it. One's marked February 5th. The other's marked February 23rd. If you had brought your case files, you would see that. Uh, so that means there's two and one on that restraining order, the final. And then the fraudulent version of the first that you sent me uh, has the facts and findings of the witness removed. Yeah, it's it's incomplete. So I don't I don't know if you did mention it sounds like you said we're missing we're missing three restraining Well yeah, actually what I mean is that you swapped it out three times. So instead of missing there are three that have been There's been three instances where the restraining orders have been taken out and replaced, yes ma'am. How do you know that? Uh because I have uh Evidence or pieces of all five of the different restraining orders. Okay. Where did those come from? Uh, two of them came from Family Services. One of them I received by myself on um, October 11th of Family Services. Actually, it was three because two are mixed together on the on the um, second judgment, which is filed February 5th, but then it's also filed February 23rd because it's a mixture of two. And then uh, the one that Kelly Pruitt sent me, this last one that was a copy of the first, has the facts and findings missing out of it. I have copies of everything. I'm going to send them to you. Don't worry. Yeah, no worries. I understand what you're saying. Well, I'll, I'll send you the files. Uh, let's I see. There have been sweat three different times. 
Okay, so that's pretty much all of my uh, issues. Let me see. Let me go through this. You're fine. Oh, here it says, I reportedly throw things when I'm mad. I become angry and begin yelling seemingly unprovoked. I have never had that behavior in my life, and I want to know where you got that allegation. No one even knows me in Ohio to have seen me behave in any way, much less anything like that. And I also have a signed and dated copy by my roommate that I have been living with for six months and have seen on a daily basis. He has never seen me behave like that in my life, in his life. Tell me what you're reading. Okay. This is on the first and the second um, case. It is Comprehensive Assessment Planning Model IS Case Plan. Uh, on the on page two of thirteen. Was this, was this more intake? Uh, I don't I don't have the intake document. I I remember I requested you to take to send it to me. I can't. You can't request that. You can request everything I can to our legal department. Okay, so I have to request that from the legal department. Okay, that's fine. Okay. In terms of you're talking about, that has some intake. The service team does not have information regarding that as far as leave assess or, or from the family. Well, I'm telling you it's not true. But you put it in there as if it's fact. Again, we didn't put it from some of the history. Okay, well, I'm just telling you, it's not true. Yeah, and I, that's weird too. No, I hear, I, I, and I can hear what you're saying. What you do is ask your request discovery, your file. Yeah, the discovery. Thank you. I'm not necessarily guaranteed that they they will be what they're able to release. Okay. 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 Who, what's the name of the person that I request the discovery for? Is it Terry Julian or is it Sharon Carney or is it the new lawyer that's been put on my case with you guys that specializes in tamper documents? Oh. Okay, so who, who are you mentioning? Uh, is it Sharon Carney, the lawyer that I request the discovery from? Or is it Terry Julian? Or is it the new lawyer that was just CC'd in on me with Family Services that has the specialty of tampered documents? No, what you need to do is you need to contact your personal attorney that you have mm -hmm. which, and is working alongside of you mm -hmm. to have contact the agency. They know the procedure. For okay, just so the agency. Personal attorney. Okay. I with you specifically. Okay. All right. Have how did you discovery information directly from the agency? 